We have in this small area 152 skeletons. ganz schön äh, die Stelle sehen, wo sich früher das Haus haben äh, der Anabaptisten befand. About three weeks ago I returned from an amazing trip, which took us from the South Tyrol up into Moravia. It was a journey of about 40 people of many different denominations, Catholics, Anabaptists, Baptists, free church people. And it was wonderful to go all together and feel united. There were two Catholics on this journey, Robert Hochgruber and Edi Geisler, who were very instrumental in forming the Hotere Arbeitskreis Südtirol und Tirol. Both of them are very knowledgeable about the Hutterite and Anabaptist history of the 1500s. They toured us through South Tyrol and Tyrol, and all along the way were also very honest about what the Catholic Church did to the Anabaptists at the time, and how many of them, hundreds, thousands of Anabaptists, were suffered and were killed for their faith. And the Catholic Church had a lot to do with it. Both Eddie and Robert see it as their mission to tell people and give people tours of these places. And it is actually a witness to the lives of the Hutterites. And it is a way of actually repenting for things that happened 500 years ago. So that was the center that was uh, always center of three denominations. Then that church was Lutheran and there was also a small community of uh, Unitas Fratrum, the Rüde Unität, yeah. and, of, uh, and a quite important one of uh, the Anabaptists. So that's why we are going there. <laughs> Then the recatalization started, so not all Anabaptists left. Some remained, mm -hmm. formally declaring to be Catholics, mm -hmm. okay. but in reality adapting themselves to still having contacts with the Anabaptists in Hungary, mm -hmm. informing them, still being somehow in contact for the case if situation changes to help them to come back uh, and so on. That was also the situation here, and they were always a very strong group of uh, um, illegal Protestants. That's why immediately, with the Tolerance patent, mm -hmm. in the end of eight, uh, 18th century, they, were, uh, they created mm -hmm. a Protestant community, which was uh, the, among the strongest in uh, more, uh, South Moravian, very proud. We, but we are going there not because of this uh, conflict between Lutherans and Evangelical and Catholics. We are going there to speak uh, about the community of Anabaptists. Yeah. And I will speak more about that community as soon as we approach the village. We can see the location where the, the, the um, house happened was and I will tell more information. Mm -hmm. It's a very old fortified uh, church dating back to the 13th century. So that was the life of, uh, of this village and this uh, fighting between the community was sometimes very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, even my uncle, for example, had still the idea that on Catholic uh, festivities, uh, for Protestants, it's better to stay at home. Mm -hmm. uh, during, you know, if there are some festivities on the road, uh, no Protestant is supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. 
And if you have to cross that road, that's not a not good idea, and especially on a bicycle, for example, it's provocation. <laughs> so go away or stay at home. This rivality, or to call it, uh, slowly disappeared in the end of the last century. Uh, it is not so strong nowadays, but different problems exist nowadays. And maybe they, they, uh, we have uh, new ones even bigger. <laughs> Hi there. Here we are in Falkenstein Castle in Austria, uh, at the edge of the Moravian district where uh, a load of Anabaptists were taken and imprisoned for quite some time and then forcibly marched hundreds of miles to Trieste to serve in the galleys as galley slaves on board a, a galley ship against the Ottoman uh, Turks. Okay. The galley slave was the worst punishment that could be in imposed upon someone other than torture and death, which many of them had suffered. And 12, they all managed to escape from Trieste just before being sent to the galleys, but 12 were recaptured and sent to, to live on the galleys, working day and night. And some even managed to survive, which was extraordinary. Five years working day and night as a galley slave in war, and some managed to return to their communities. But even at the threat of death and imprisonment and torture and galley work, they wouldn't give up their Anabaptist faith and committed to stay with it. A wonderful testimony to their commitment to Jesus and a great sadness for us as Catholics who uh, imprisoned them in this castle and then forced them to march hundreds of miles to an uncertain fate. So uh, here we are in Czech, uh, we've had an incredible day, so we've been looking at some archaeological digs, uh, a graveyard this morning, a powerful thing to see the, the, the skeletons being very gently, very carefully excavated. Uh, here is the uh, Hutterian cemetery. Also, here we are at a place where the Hutterian Friedhof was. Mm -hmm. And uh, they established, uh, the Hutterian established uh, here the Bruderhof in 1565. And uh, the Bruderhof uh, were the biggest, the most biggest maybe in Songoravia. Huh. They lived here 600 people. <laughs> and we started here in 2018. We make first the geophysical research here we can find how big is the cemetery. We make this in 2018 and uh, now, six later after, we have uh, in this small area 152 skeletons for oh, now. <laughs> many, many skeletons in many layers in this mm -hmm. place. For us, for anthropologists, it's very interesting because they are uh, Exiles from uh, uh, Tyrolean and so on, yeah. and and uh, the the whole story of this group is very interesting. Yeah, they, they subsequently to Slovakia, Romania, mm. Ukraine, yeah, and yeah. USA, and Canada. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is first time we can uh, make some analysis from skeleton of Hutterites because mm -hmm. uh, here in South Moravia there are many Bruderhofs, mm -hmm. but uh, only. Only a few skeletons were discovered because because uh, almost this cemetery was forgotten. Mm -hmm. We have uh, written resources about the life of Hutterians. Mm -hmm. This uh, 
uh, skeletons are full of information for us. We can say how the groups was that they mixed with this population or, ni- or not. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Maybe not. And now we have dating uh, and they fit perfectly in this year. Mm-hmm. When we finished uh, with this research, we can go back this this skeleton maybe maybe uh, this is this is many many years after i think uh, the the cemetery is uh, quite big and uh, i think maybe 10 15 years uh, making to here do. the research. In the afternoon we saw some remaining buildings, farm buildings and accommodation and some other stuff that's still still preserved to this day from a community in another village. It's uh, very exciting to see some of the original buildings still there. They need a bit of renovation but um, they have a project to try and to do that, to help people to understand that this was a living community. Um, it was very good. It's been a great day. So we've completed our week, we've done our Anabaptist memorial trip and we're back here in Austria uh, in Retz in the beautiful Bruderhof uh, community uh, uh, farm. Here at the Bruderhof we consider the early Hutterites of the 1500s to be our spiritual forefathers. As a child I already remember hearing the story of the coat being thrown on the ground and the brothers and sisters throwing their possessions on that coat. This was the beginning of the Hutterite communities where the brothers and sisters shared everything in common and looked after the needs of all those around them. This is a challenge to us today at the Bruderhof because we try today to do the same, to live nearby each other in complete community of goods and share what we have, not only with each other, but hopefully with our neighborhood as well. One of the points of the Anabaptists of the early 1500s that they were very clear on was that they needed to have believers baptism, baptism of adults. And this is a point that unites us now with the Free Church and the Baptists. This point of adult baptism, though, was something that 500 years ago caused their deaths and suffering. And this was a point, of course, that also the Catholics did not agree with. Although I know the story of the Hutterites quite well and have read through the Große Geschichtsbuch a couple times, it was very striking to stand in the valleys and look up on the steep mountainsides and think of Jakob Hutter walking miles and miles up steep mountains or the Hutterites escaping the South Tyrol and hiking over snow-covered mountains. Another moment that struck me was standing in the dungeon where Hans Schlaffer suffered and where he said his final prayer before he was executed. It was a moment actually where all of us in the group just had to stand quietly in awe of the suffering that this man was ready to endure for his faith.
Why a Gedenk fart? Well, it was the suffering of our forefathers, the suffering of the Anabaptists that brought this group of believers together to go on this journey. We felt very united for the week that we were together. We ate together, we shared prayers together, sang songs together. Once, one evening that especially moved me was on the second evening after spending the day at the place in the South Tyrol where Jakob Hutter was born and where he was baptized and where he was imprisoned with his wife Katerina in a castle. We were all tired out and we came home and we were in a, in a room having a prayer service. <coughs> Verena Lang got up and she said, I feel like I must ask God for forgiveness for what my church, the Catholics, did to the Anabaptists 500 years ago. And she got down on her knees in front of me and she said a prayer and she wept and she asked for forgiveness for what the Catholics had done to kill so many thousands of Anabaptists so long ago. Hans Peter Horman, a brother from our Darvel community, got up and put his hand on her shoulder and just said another prayer, asking for God to forgive every one of us where we have failed and where we have sinned and where we haven't loved him enough. And then the whole group of us stood up and said the Lord's Prayer. It was a special moment, a moment of redemption that hopefully will have effects into the future and will bring us together with people of many faiths and nationalities all around the world. It's a trip I'll never forget.